The mainstream model of galaxy evolution has a black hole at the centre which grows over time. At some stage it becomes so large that the output of energy drives away the material that would normally be used for the formation of new stars. But astronomers are discovering galaxies which have one of these supposed giant black holes that should stop this process, but have observed that stars are still happily forming despite this. So what might be going on here? Astronomers believe that the universe is filled with galaxies that are no longer capable of creating new stars. Normally, galaxies have large stellar nurseries where stars are born. In the standard model, stars can only be formed if there is an abundance of dust and cold gas that can be found in vast clouds known to populate interstellar space. Over time, gravitational attraction and other catalysts cause the material that form these stellar nurseries to group together and eventually collapse into fully formed stars and solar systems. Mainstream models also place a large supermassive black hole at the centre of these galaxies. These black holes can sometimes misbehave and consume vast amounts of this material which stops this formation process and can cause the entire process to shut down entirely. As these objects get larger and larger they eventually become so large that as it draws in the material this forms into an accretion disk which will start spinning faster and glow incredibly brightly releasing massive amounts of energy. In the mainstream model this would mark the end of life of a galaxy. As it grows larger and larger it starts to emit more and more radiation which can cause the gas in the stellar nurseries to become heated and ejected entirely and this in turn stops the formation process of new stars. And hence from that point onwards the galaxy is on a very slow decline. However, astronomers are now discovering more and more galaxies that somehow are able to overcome this and despite having an active quasar at its heart, is still able to produce new stars. Astronomers were able to inspect the infrared fingerprints from galaxies in order to determine the amount of interstellar dust and gas present. They discovered that it still had active star forming regions despite having what they describe as a cold quasar. In fact, in a study from last year, they discovered that these types of galaxies are far more common than they first thought. So far, they have discovered that 10% of all the galaxies with an accreting supermassive black hole at their center still have cold gas and are still producing new stars. This was a very surprising result, even stranger was that this was not restricted to a particular type of galaxy. They discovered some that had spiral arms, while others were compact galaxies, and some were showing signs of merging with other galaxies. They all seemed to maintain an unexpected supply of cold gas. And this has forced astronomers to concede that they may need a new model for how galaxies evolve. So is there a different way of looking at this? There are a number of aspects that are probably important to consider. Firstly, the idea that stars simply form in stellar nurseries from gravitational collapse is outdated. We know that stars like to form along filaments of material. We also know that the electromagnetic force plays a very important role in their formation. In the Electric Universe model, these cold gas clouds are not simply gas clouds. There is much evidence that we have already discussed which shows that these clouds are filamented. These filaments are caused by the pinching effect as plasma flows through these clouds along the filaments. Certain events can cause this pinching to become extreme and will cause the formation of a star. This is why we see stars forming along filaments. The center of the galaxy is not powered by a supermassive black hole. Instead, there is an object which may indeed be something similar to Eric Lerner's plasmoid. This draws in material and ejects material along its axis. This is not a super dense object, but is a highly energetic one and undergoes periodic changes in output, what they describe as feeding and resting periods. Can this object stop the formation of stars then? What role does this play in maintaining the galaxy? In the EU model, the stars are all connected via stellar Birkeland currents, which are tethered to the heart of the galaxy, the plasmoid potentially. If we examine the basic concept of Alvin's galactic circuit, 
we can see that this might create a current that runs along the arms and out at the poles, and then loops back round. Does the quasar sit at the heart of a galaxy acting as the conversion point, pulling in the current along the arms and pushing it out of the axis? What would fuel this mechanism? Alvin thought that gravitational collapse could store enough magnetic energy to drive this process, for the duration of the galaxy's life. Eric Lerner's model would have this being a periodic process drawing in material from the outer edge of the central part of the galaxy to create the plasmoid. Eventually this would run out, depleting the material, and there would no longer be anything left at the heart of the galaxy. Of course, it is also possible that the galaxies themselves are strung out along the cosmic web, and that it is this connection that drives a slow flow of current into the galaxies which drives this process. Changes to the incoming current could have a dramatic effect on the stars in the galaxy itself. Stars in the electric universe are created by sudden dramatic changes in the current in the filament we know exist across the galaxies in what they call cold gas clouds. So what does this mean for the idea of a cold quasar? It firstly shows that the mainstream model of galactic evolution is broken, as once more the exception turns out to be the norm. Quasars are once more appearing to be objects that behave in ways that they do not expect. In the electric universe, quasars are the starting point of galaxies. They evolve into galaxies, and eventually these galaxies will eject material that forms into new quasars, restarting the process. The quasar itself is not directly connected to the formation of stars, but it is clearly the central point of a galaxy, so indirectly it must do. But we must also be cautious here. There are many open questions regarding what they are if they are not black holes. I cannot escape the idea that what we see on one scale must also apply on other scales. We see many similar behaviours between stars and galaxies. There can be no coincidence in that. There is no single model for both. We know that quasars have jets, and young stars have jets as well. We suspect that quasars can eject huge amounts of material which can then form new quasars. If this is all composed of plasma, then this process of ejection should be the same or similar to the way that we think stars can eject material forming companion stars or gas giants. This is in fact what Wall speculated in a paper that I am currently making a video about. But that then does beg the question, why do they not look alike? Maybe they do, as most images of these types of objects do indeed show more star-like properties, with the only exception being the infamous M87 image, which you could certainly call more fabricated than real. Some have proclaimed that the donut is simply a plasmoid, but we really need to be very cautious about using anything from this image as a real fact. One other interesting fact about these cold quasars is that they appear as blue, very compact objects, which are also very luminous. It is now thought that quasars are mostly blue in colour. Obviously, the younger quasars will have a much higher intrinsic redshift, making them appear redder. Over time, these would evolve and they would become less and less electron deficient, making their redshift decrease. If we examine stars, then blue stars are generally considered to be objects which are under much higher electrical stress, and we would of course expect that the object at the centre of a galaxy to be something that is under extreme electrical stress. There is much that we do not know about how galaxies function and what these mysterious objects are. As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.